in this course this is application of soil mechanics this is basically all applications uh, of basic soil mechanics and uh, in this uh, course the books of uh, particularly followed one is foundation design and analysis by your bowels then mechanics of soils by jumis then soil engineering by ringler and uh, principles of foundation engineering by b m das so in an way these are the books uh, particularly followed in this course and uh, this books has been referred particularly this course let us start with this uh, pile seat piles cantilever seat piles if i draw a cantilever seat pile now where it has been used this cantilever seat pile if this question is where it has been used then you can say particularly in offshore structures when this seep is coming and birthing cantilever seat pile has to be connected by this so once if this is my this is my water table somewhere else is water table here or this side or this side may be soil here it is soil if this is the water table so what will happen once this seep is coming seep has to stop somewhere else and birthing and people should come out and this is your ground surface this is your completely ground means this is your ground surface so people has to come out this is one case means particularly this cantilever seat piles has been used in case of offshore structures as well as uh, particularly onshore structures means ports and harbors these cantilever seat piles has been used now sometimes either you can provide this is this is your seat pile this is your cantilever seat pile why it is called cantilever this entire load has been taken by this cantilever action of this uh, a uh, seat pile and it has been embedded inside this ground surface of the soil below this so what will happen it will take this entire load coming here will be taken by this cantilever seat pile by means of cantilever action by means of cantilever action that's why it is called cantilever seat piles and once again it has been used particularly port and harbors offshore and as well as onshore structures it has been used so this cantilever seat pile maybe it you can say that 
anchor or without anchor. If I sometimes what happen if the bending moment is much high. So, what will happen to resist this bending moment or resist the moment at top of the cantilever seat pile to stop the failure sometimes anchor has been provided. So, there are different modes of failure depending upon that how the cantilever seat pile is there. One is rigid, other is your flexible. So, depending upon that means in this case what happened this uh, anchor has been provided to your cantilever. So, this is called anchored seat piles, anchored seat pile. If anchor has not been provided, it is simply called cantilever seat piles, cantilever seat piles. So, these are particularly these seat piles and others, these are particularly to retain, to retain the soil mass one end and other end is that it has been used for particularly port and harbors. If I go this for two parts, one is your rigid walls and another is your flexible walls. Retaining of the soil, retaining of the soil I can say that retaining structures, retaining structures. So, that means in the these retaining structures what will what will happen at one part of this one part of this wall the soil has to be retained, soil has to be retained. So, that is why it is called a retaining structures. So, these retaining structures are called sometimes rigid retaining wall or rigid wall or flexible wall, rigid wall or flexible wall. So, rigid walls are called retaining walls because this is a massive and it will fail by means of rigid, its rigidity is very high. Other one is called flexible, this flexible is nothing but is your seat piles and it will take load by means of cantilever action. If it takes by means of cantilever action, you can say that cantilever seat pile. If it will resist the load by means of anchor, you can say, say that cantilever anchored seat pile. So, depending upon that, the classification will, uh, will be there. So, retaining structure I can made it into two parts, one is your rigid, other is your flexible. So, flexible next uh, uh, next class I will show you what are the things and rigid what are the things. So, basically two parts retaining of the structures means it will retain the soil mass at one end, it will retain the soil mass at one end, it will not allow the soil mass should be get disturbed or maybe soil mass should be eroded, the particularly it will retain one, one side. So, if it is purely rigid the structure then it is called rigid retaining wall or maybe retaining wall. If it is flexible in nature, so it is called seat pile or anchor seat pile depending upon that functions how it works. Now, in this case before I go in detail what are the different analysis and others and classification. So, let us start with this basic physics means basic mechanics of this cantilever seat piles, cantilever seat piles. What we want to find it out, what are the parameters from this cantilever seat pile once I am saying that what are the actually parameters required to be determined, what are the parameters required to be determined. So, parameter one is your depth of driving or penetration then second is your size or cross section and cross section of seat pile. Then in this case size and cross section of seat pile, what you are supposed to find it out? You are supposed to find it out stress, maximum bending moment.
and uh, by maximum bending moment because of your lateral load. Then third is your if you provide some anchor may be anchor capacity anchor if necessary. If you look at this cantilever seat pile then why first part is where this seat pile has been used. As I said earlier it has been used particularly for harbors dock and harbor. So, where the ship will come and rest and people can come out. So, one end what will happen one end ship will be tied if ship is berthing here this will be tied here. So, that people can come out outside. So, this is this is the case this is the purpose where it has been used this is the purpose first one. Second part is if it has been used then what are the different parameters we are supposed to find it out. The different parameters is that depth of driving or penetration means below this uh, below this surface I could not I will not say this is exactly ground surface because this water table is there may be ground surface some somewhere else else. The definition is that this is your degrade line dredge line that will tell later. So, what is that depth how much depth it should be penetrated below this level below this level. So, that whatever the entire load is coming at the top it will be taken by below this level. So, it will be stable. So, this is first and foremost criteria means parameter to be determined. Then size and cross section why we need size and cross section because depending upon the size and cross section what is the stress induced on this wall how much stress induced and what is the maximum bending moment because depending upon the bending moment you can find it out how it will how it will bending how how the moment will come whether it is within this permissible limit or not with respect to your lateral load. Then the size and cross section depending upon that you will have to find it out these two stress and maximum bending moment. Then other one is your anchor if you provide anchor if suppose this bending moment is very high or means very high value of moment you are getting. So, it will fail by means of bending then what happen you will have to as I said you will have to provide anchor. If you want to provide the anchor then what should be its capacity at what depth you are going to provide. Suppose I provide the anchor here. Now, what is its capacity anchor capacity then up to what depth means up to what length this anchor should be provided. So, that it can take your bending moment it can take your bending moment. So, these are the parameters we are going to determine from this cantilever seat pile walls. Then let us start before going to the classification let me start with a brief of cantilever uh, seat pile walls then we will go to the in details backward about this classifications. Now, if you come back to this there are two soils either it may be a purely granular that means cohesionless soil or may be cohesive or C5 soils. For granular soils what are the assumptions? Because this has to be theoretically analyzed, theoretically you have to analyze anal, uh, means analyze then find it out what is its capacity. So, that it can take this amount of load. So, with that suppose if I know theoretically if I know suppose this is my height h depth of the penetration if I know the soil property of the phi I can find it out the capacity based on that based on that. I can say that what is its maximum lateral capacity what is its maximum lateral capacity this seat pile can take. So, that whatever the sheep and others they are birthing how much the capacity will they have that can be said ok. This seat pile wall can take maximum of 2 ton 1 ton 3 ton 5 ton per meter length. So, depending upon that other parameter has to be also determined or may be fixed. 
सो आजम सन इज आर्थ प्रेसर आक्स ओराइजेंटली एंड एंगल ऑफ फ्रिक्शन एंगल ऑफ फ्रिक्शन दिस इज डेटा एंगल ऑफ फ्रिक्शन बिटवीन द वॉल एंगल ऑफ फ्रिक्शन बिटवीन द वॉल एंड द सॉइल दिस इज कॉल्ड डेल्टा सो डेल्टा इज जीरो डेल्टा इज जीरो वॉट डज इट मीन फर्स्ट एजम्सन इज आर्थ प्रेशर आर्ट्स फॉर एजेंटली दैट मीन्स इट इज नॉट ए कर्व आर्थ प्रेशर इट इज नॉट ए कर्व आर्थ प्रेशर this is a simple earth pressure act horizontally and second part is your delta is supposed to be zero first one is simple assumption delta is zero that means friction between wall and soil should not be there that means this wall should be assumption is a smooth wall it is a smooth wall then assumption second assumption sheet pile within the soil is considered to be inelastic is it is a rigid body then third assumption is if it is a rigid if it is a rigid then for particularly this is for these are the assumption has been taken for particularly granular soils that means granular soil means it is cohesionless soil so there is a rotation rotation called pi hot rotation called pi hot point o pi hot point o that means it is assumed once there is a uh, this load is there there this is rigid so what will happen it is not flexible this is a rigid wall so it will rotate somewhere else the wall will rotate somewhere else some point so this is called o or this o point is called a pivot point where the wall rotate this is called pivot point so it's located x0 unit of length below the ground surface that means this is at a distance of x0 below the ground surface look at the assumption 3 assumption 2 and assumption 3 that means sheet pile within the soil mass if you look at the soil is here the sheet pile within the soil mass that means below the soil mass it is in in elastic that means no elastic deflection no elastic deflection so no elastic deflection means it is a rigid body it is a rigid body rigid body so the moment assumption 2 followed sheet pile wall for particularly granular soil within the soil mass it is rigid body the moment we follow what will happen what will happen second part will come that if it is a rigid so it will rotate somewhere else so the moment you say that it is rigid the sheet pile is within the soil mass particularly granular soil is a rigid body that means 
there will not be any deflection there will not be any deflection it means it means there is a rotation this means this wall will rotate some point some point that is called point o and this point is called pivot point and it is located at a distance x0 below this where the soil starts it is located so these two assumptions are main assumptions then fourth one is also that is also important for stability for stability analysis for stability equation of static equilibrium is to be applied what does it mean equation of static equilibrium that means summation of forces in horizontal direction summation of forces in vertical direction and summation of movement at point o is equal to 0 summation of forces in horizontal direction summation of forces in vertical direction summation of movement at point o at the pivot point for stability that means the equation of static equilibrium has to be satisfied satisfied that means static equilibrium equation has to be satisfied for stability so these are the main four assumptions for particularly granular soil or cohesionless soil has been used first one is your earth pressure act horizontally its horizontal means it is not curved one earth pressure is simple horizontal it's not curved one then the friction angle between the wall <coughs> and the soil this is called delta is equal to 0 that means the wall is a smooth one wall is a smooth one this is your second assumption third assumption is your sheet pile within the soil that means sheet pile below the soil mass assume to be a rigid body for particularly cohesionless soil once it is a rigid body that means it will not deflect it will not deflect that means what will happen it will rotate at a point o below this soil below the soil this point of rotation point o is called pivot point this is called pivot point then once there is a rotation there is a pivot point then this distance of this pivot point should be at a distance x0 below the soil below the soil not below the ground below the soil if i say this is my ground surface because once there is a sea piece there it has to be burned so this is the ground surface they are going out this may be full of water this may be full of water no actually where the soil soil mass starts or the foundation soil starts below this up to the pivot point it x0 or any distance any distance that has been said x0 then fourth one is your for stability analysis fourth one is your for stability analysis factor of safety means sorry forces in horizontal direction forces in vertical direction and movement about point o should be zero this is called stability analysis that means static equilibrium has to be satisfied for stability analysis static equilibrium has to be applied and it has to be satisfied that means any imbalance force has to be balanced and put it to zero and you can get it so these are all four assumptions now let us understand the mechanics of this cantilever retaining wall a eh, sorry cantilever sheet pile inside the granular soil or cohesionless soil this case one say a inside the cohesionless soil so what will happen as per the assumption b or second assumption it is a rigid body because of rigid body it will rotate some point point o and this point o will be located at a distance below this soil this is your soil mass at a distance say x0 so if this is my point of rotation point of rotation or o pivot point o so what will happen
it will rotate that means what exactly happened look at this what exactly happened now if i say this is x0 and say this is called p1 and this is called p2 so this is say point d and this is a point h now what do you understand how the mechanics how you are going to find it out you can look at this this is a wall suppose this is a wall this wall has a rotation point point o and below this this is a soil so what will happen you know earlier what is active state what is passive state it is basic soil mechanics active state and passive state because this is an application of soil mechanics so active state is if there is a wall if this is a wall for retaining of soil if this side is soil if the wall is moving away from the soil the wall is moving away from the soil mass moving away from the soil mass the pressure generated by soil to the wall is in active state or active earth pressure. Similarly, in case of passive state if this is the wall and if it is the soil mass if this wall if this wall is here what happened moving away from the soil mass if this wall is moving toward the soil mass that means it is moving toward the soil mass so what will happen the pressure generated by soil is nothing but is your in is, is in uh, passive state or passive earth pressure passive earth pressure this is these are the two basic things we are going to apply this is your soil mechanics for active state and passive state if you look at here that means top of top part of this take this there are two part because there is a point of rotation part 1 and below the point of rotation this is a part 2 so part 1 this part is moving away but this is your soil this part is moving away that means this is your active state from O to this because this is moving away at the other end at the other end it is moving towards this side of the field it is moving away this side of this it is moving towards that means this will be in passive state now if you come back to here below the below the point of rotation this part is this part is moving away from the soil mass because it is from here it is going like this moving away that means this is in active state and from here to here this part is moving toward the soil mass so that means this is in passive state so if you look at this basic physics behind it the top part of active state and passive state is in reverse order of the bottom part of the bottom part so what will happen we'll see how this mechanics how it has been derived we'll see it 